Module 3. Electrical Theory. The first step to understanding how electromagnetic induction works is to understand some basics of electron theory and what makes a material a good conductor of electron flow, and thus electrical current flow. All matter, whether its physical state is a solid, liquid, or a gas, is made up of molecules. All molecules are made from either pure elements or compounds. All compounds are made from smaller units called atoms, and elements are different types of atoms. There are over 100 different atoms that combine to create everything around us, some of which we can see and some of which are invisible to the human eye, such as gases. Every atom consists of three types of fundamental particles. Protons, which have a positive electrical charge. Neutrons, which have no charge. And electrons, which have a negative electrical charge. Protons and neutrons reside in the nucleus at the center of the atom, while electrons revolve around the nucleus in fixed orbits at different energy levels. Similar to magnetic polarity, like charged particles repel one another, and opposite charged particles attract each other. The top image represents a carbon atom with six protons in the nucleus and six orbital electrons. The bottom image represents a copper atom with 29 protons in the nucleus and 29 orbital electrons. The outermost ring of any element requires a maximum of eight electrons for stability, except when there is only one ring which has a maximum of two electrons in the first ring, because two is its maximum number. The carbon atom has four electrons in its outermost ring, which can include up to eight electrons. The copper atom has only one electron in its outermost ring, which can include up to eight electrons. The outside ring in the copper atom is less stable than the outside ring in the carbon atom. The unstable electron in the outer ring of the copper atom is easily transferred from one copper atom to another, and those free electrons are constantly moving from one atom to another. Applying a voltage to a conductive material is what causes electrons to travel between atoms, and thus, Current flow. Voltage is the electromotive force, or EMF, that causes electrons to flow from atom to atom. EMF can be thought of as an electron moving force. Common sources of EMF are batteries and electric generators. The electrons that occupy the outermost shell of an atom are called valence electrons. In order to conduct electricity, a material's atoms are required to have mobile valence electrons. Materials with high electron mobility, many free electrons, are called conductors, while materials with low electron mobility, few or no free electrons, are called insulators. Metals tend to have loosely held, highly mobile, valence electrons. So metals are generally conductive. Silver and copper are two of the best conductors of electricity because their atoms contain a high number of free, movable electrons in their outer orbital rings. The more free electrons a material's atoms have, the greater conductivity of the material. Although voltage, or EMF, can cause free electrons to move from atom to atom, other forces such as heat, light, friction, chemical reactions, and pressure can also cause free electron movement from atom to atom. Notice in this illustration how electron flow is in the opposite direction of current flow. Don't ask me why that is. It's just the way it is. Some things will always remain a mystery. Conductance 
indicated by the letter G, is the measure of how easily electricity flows through a conductor. Conductance is related to conductivity. Conductivity is the property of the material itself, such as silver or copper. Conductance can vary based on material conductivity and material dimensions. Conductance is the reciprocal of resistance. Since resistance is measured in ohms, conductance is sometimes referred to in terms of the mo, which is simply ohm spelled backwards. When conductance is high, resistance is low, and vice versa. This illustration shows that materials with low resistance have high electron flow, and high resistance materials have low electron flow. Low resistance materials like copper will have high ICS percentage values, while high resistance materials like lead will have low ICS percentage values. Resistance, R, is the opposition that a particular component offers to the flow of electricity and can occur whether an alternating current, AC, or direct current, DC, source is used. Resistance is related to resistivity. Resistivity is the property of the material itself, for example, silver or copper. Resistance is the inverse of conductance. When resistance is high, conductance is low, and vice versa. Unit of measurement for resistance is ohms. Symbol for resistance is the Greek letter omega. Any property that changes the likelihood of an electron interacting with the material it is moving through will change the amount of resistance to movement the electrons encounter in the material. More electron interaction reduces electrical flow, which is viewed as higher resistance. An increase in temperature will cause atoms to have more kinetic energy and more movement. The increase in movement makes it easier for electrons to collide with other atoms, electrons or impurities, which in turn increases the resistance to current flow. The variables affecting the resistance of a material are the type of material or material resistivity, the length of the material, and the cross-sectional area of the material. The temperature of the material is also a factor. Higher temperatures are associated with more resistance. This illustration shows that materials with high conductance have high electron flow and low conductance materials have low electron flow. A common way to express material conductivity in eddy current testing is conductivity based on the International Annealed Copper Standard, or ICS. Materials are said to have a conductivity in percentage of IACS. High conductivity materials like copper and silver will have high IACS percentage values, while low conductivity materials like lead will have low IACS percentage values. Ohm's law states that the applied voltage is directly proportional to the resistance and the current. This means that if the resistance is fixed and the voltage goes up, then the current flow will increase. Also, if the voltage is fixed and the resistance goes up, then the current will decrease. The unit for electromotive force, or EMF, is volts. The application of an EMF overcomes the tendency of electrons to remain in their orbits. EMF pushes and pulls electrons from atom to atom. Current is the rate of electron flow, and current is measured in amperes or amps. An amp is the amount of electrical current that exists when a number of electrons, having one coulomb of charge, move past a point in one second. A coulomb is the charge carried by roughly 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. Wow! That's a lot of zeros. This slide shows the Ohm's law wheel 
which can be referenced to explore relationships between current, voltage, and resistance. The letter I is used to indicate current, whereas the letter V indicates voltage. The letter R is used to indicate resistance. The water hose analogy is often used to explain the relationships between current, voltage, and resistance. The figure below illustrates how electrical properties can be viewed analogously as related to a water pipe and water flow. Voltage is considered to be analogous to pressure. Water pressure is required to make the water flow in this example, and voltage is required to get current to flow in a conductor. A restriction in the water pipe limits water flow. Similar to how a conductor with high resistance would restrict the electrical current flow, the directional spray nozzle is analogous to polarity, which for electrical current is either positive or negative. Hopefully this analogy helps you understand the relationships between current, voltage, and resistance. Voltage, or electromotive force, is a force that causes electrons to flow because it can attract or repel. When voltage is applied to conductive materials, electrons will advance from atom to atom, resulting in a flow of electrical charges called current or electricity. Movement of a magnet relative to a coil produces electromotive forces in the coil. The same electromotive forces are produced if the coil is moved relative to the magnet. The greater the speed, the greater the magnitude of the EMF, and the EMF is zero when there is no motion. Dragging a magnet along a conductive material, or moving the material through a magnetic field, are both methods of inducing an EMF. There are two basic types of current. Direct current, or DC, flows in a steady state, whereas alternating current, or AC, continually reverses direction. The number of cycles per second, for AC, is the current frequency. Alternating current is the type of current that is normally generated by power plants i.e. energy companies. Power plants use a kinetic energy source such as wind, steam, or flowing water, directed to flow through turbine generators. In turbine generators, the kinetic energy source is directed through a series of turbine blades that are mounted around the circumference of a large shaft called the rotor. The purpose of directing the kinetic energy source through the turbines is to force the rotor to spin. The spinning rotor is encased in a stationary housing called the stator, which contains a series of copper windings around its circumference. Permanent magnets mounted around the circumference of the spinning rotor produce alternating magnetic fields that induce current into the copper windings in the stator. This figure illustrates how a turbine electric generator in a power plant functions, as described in the previous slides. Since the magnetic fields are alternating, so is the resultant induced current. The frequency of the alternating current produced by the generator is dependent on several factors, including the number of rotating magnetic poles from the rotor magnets and the rotation speed of the rotor in revolutions per minute, or RPMIS. Changing the number of magnetic poles around the rotor, or changing the rotational speed of the rotor, will change the frequency of the output alternating current. A generator that has two magnetic poles, north and south, around the rotor, with a rotation speed of 3600 revolutions per minute, would produce 60 cycles of alternating current per second, or 60 hertz. A generator that has four magnetic poles around the rotor would only need to rotate at 1800 revolutions per minute to generate the same 60 hertz.
Direct current is the type of current normally used in batteries. Whereas kinetic energy is used to produce alternating current in power plants, chemical energy is used to produce the current in batteries. Batteries have three main components, a cathode, an anode, and electrolyte. The cathode and anode are made of different chemicals, typically metals. The electrolyte is a chemical medium that allows the flow of electrical charge between the cathode and anode. When a load such as a light bulb is hooked up to a battery, the chemical on the anode releases electrons that flow through the electrolyte to the cathode. The cathode accepts the electrons, which completes the circuit for the flow of electrons. Batteries will continue to work until one or both terminals run out of the chemicals necessary to sustain the chemical reaction that occurs during current flow. Note that many eddy current instruments are powered with direct current, but oscillators within the instrument are used to generate the alternating current applied to the test coil.